Hi, kitty cats. I am Amethyst Deherrick, your hostess for Gender Identity Weekly, a weekly discussion about identity and gender from the contributors and guests of the Purple Paw publication website, Gender Identity Today. This content is brought to you by subscribers of Gender Identity Today. If you are already a subscriber, thank you very much. If you would like to support shows just like this one, as well as other content by our contributors, please consider subscribing using the links you're going to find in the show notes. So today, I am speaking with a friend of mine, Miriam. Miriam, Hello. I know you, first of all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh, of course. No, this is going to be great. So I know Medium from uh, Miriam. I know Miriam from Medium. And also you have a Substack publication, and you are the founder of the website, uh, Miriam Reads Tarot. Yes? Yes, that's right. Wait, I don't know why I'm needing so They really need the confirmation there. But um, we met through that, but then we're also, we also both participate in the, the Medium Refugee Substack. And was it last week? I think it was two weeks ago I had a conversation with a friend of mine named Tucker, Tucker Lieberman, which you can see that show, you know, on YouTube. And he and I started talking about tarot just a little bit. And I have been dying to do a, a show about divination and, and its, its contribution to identity. So I said to Tucker, hey, you want to do that? And he said, oh, yeah, it'd be great. And then said, you know what, actually, though, maybe I'm not the right person for it. So I thought, since I focus um, on identity in my work, um, you know, like my opinion is that the more that we know ourselves, the better we know ourselves, it makes the world in general, we're happier and the world's a better place. So I wanted to talk to you about divination because this is what you do. This is your, your career. This is your, uh, I don't want to call it your shtick, but well, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, it's basically part of what I do. I'm mostly a writer, but I do tarot readings as yes. well on the side. I'd like to do a lot more of it, but um, it'll come at, in due time. So yeah, now this is something I've been doing for over 15 years on and off. Um, oh, gosh. I did take I did take breaks from it at times because, you know, mental health issues and just other stuff which I'm not going to get into. Um <laughs> but yeah, so I've uh, been really really doing uh doing it hardcore like going at it hardcore over the last couple of years anyway. So um I'm I do all kinds of readings. I do career, relationship, self, um, you know, um, self-analysis, past mm -hmm. life even, all that interesting stuff. So I'm also a psychic medium. Um, so that's another thing that I'm doing. And yeah. I do astrology. I actually am a certified astrologer. I received my first certification in 2006. Okay. And uh, I don't really practice astrology too much anymore, but my focus is more on tarot, but I do add some astrology into my work here and there. Sure, sure. So, so I'm into. I mean, just you know, from the this is like the opening question. I mean, why why did you end up devoting? I mean, you said 2006. That's 17 years now. Why devote yeah. that your life to that? Why why devote? Why is this interesting to you? Well, here's the thing. Um, I've always had intuitive abilities, but I didn't really. Mm. I didn't really acknowledge it until after my daughter was born, and she's 21 now, but I wasn't really getting into it too much until that time, and um, I didn't start really practicing much of it until a few years after that, um, and I can tell you my daughter's quite intuitive herself, but she's only 21. When I was 21, I certainly wasn't ready. She's not ready. I know she'll be ready in her, in her time, and that's fine. I don't push it. <clears throat> um, so, I mean, I've had a hard life. I mean, I think so many of us have. There's, there are some who do coast by and whatever. They're, those who do coast by are not going to be interested in watching this anyway because uh, no. they're too superficial. No. I'm, I mean, I'm just being honest, okay? Right. I'm just, yeah. No, but, it's, it's, but I mean, so, so you're interested in, in like, I'm just trying to come up with something profound, but like looking into the deeper aspects of humanity yeah. then? Yourself oh, as yeah. well as others. I've discovered a lot of things along the way with my work, tarot, and with my other psychic work as well. And what I have found is that every soul 
is here to evolve. I do not believe, though, that you plan your traumas. A lot of these mediums will gaslight you into believing that because that is a very, sure. very... That's spiritual bypassing, and that's also a very spiritual, toxic spiritual way of victim blaming. What I do believe happens right. is that you do have karma that you have to balance, and you are going to come in with a specific energy, which is you know, um, found through your name and birth date. And my old middle name was so toxic, which I obviously must have chose. Um, I changed it. I changed it because, uh, Good. yeah. And about five years after changing, things started to improve. So, yeah. Oh, that took a while, actually. That's interesting. It's, it does because things take a long time for it to manifest physically. That's why. Sure, sure. Yeah. Did, did you, I'm, I'm for the life of me, I can't think, uh, Cairo, is it Cairo's book of numbers? Did you, did you look at um, the numerology of your middle name? How is that? Yes, uh, I did. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's uh, through the Chaldean that you, you, you would actually yes, yes. see. Yes. Right. Um, yeah. So it's overly sensitive to the point that I can tell you right now, I was a pathological people pleaser. Okay. Mm. And, uh. I actually had to go through, I'm not going to get into this too much, I actually have a book coming out um, next week, hopefully, called uh, oh, wow. Overcoming Echoism with Tarot, so, by using Tarot, so I talk about my experiences and how I overcame my Echoism and how you can use Tarot to help you um, overcome it and get through, uh, ex examine why you are a people pleaser and what you can do to set boundaries and all that, right? And so, uh, and so e echoism is the more technical term than for, well, it's, for what pleasing. it is. Ec echoism is the opposite of narcissism. Okay, so you got a scale. Uh, I see. The the one end of the scale you got pathological narcissism, and then the other end is echoism. Echoism is not a formal diagnosis. Okay, what gotcha. it basically is is that where narcissism focuses on you, 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 you only care about what you want, you don't care how you affect others, echoism is the opposite of that. You want everyone to I be see. happy, you're a people pleaser, your needs don't matter, that's really, and unfortunately it does stem from childhood trauma, um, with uh, emotional abuse, bullying, which it, unfortunately I dealt with, because I've yeah. said, I'm different. <laughs> When, when you when you're sensitive, yes, you are. Yeah. And people, it's interesting because my opinion, if you are sensitive, like other sensitive people, like recognize you and go, oh, you seem sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, you know, like spiritually sensitive. I don't just mean, you know. Yeah. Wow, it was a hot day. I'm I'm sort of sweaty. Uh, you know, don't be so sensitive. But you know, when I think when you have the ability to 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 connect to the universe on a different level. Like, mm -hmm. I think, you know, those people recognize each other, but then I think the people who don't also recognize it. And I don't think they feel it. I don't think they go, oh, I feel power flowing through this person. I think there's a sense of, dare I say, fear that, you know, mm. here's somebody who might have power. And, uh, I don't think so. Um, I think no? they saw me okay. as the opposite because I didn't know how to stand up for myself. They saw me as the perfect prey. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll go. I'll go with that. Yeah. I have to think about this now. I'm gonna. Now I'm gonna have to think about this. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. But, but you so, could still be right, though. Maybe on some level, it it maybe that's how it was affected, you know. But let me tell you, the the ones who really bullied me, believe me, I know today are totally narcissistic, and I know that. Sure, I know yeah. that. Yeah. But but like you've been to to conferences, right? To like tarot conferences, or, oh, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes you walk into one of those, and there's such a cacophony. Oh yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And not, not just sound, but a cacophony of energy that you go, oh, yeah. shit, I'm going to go back to my hotel room. It's a little, it's a little much. Yeah, so. no, definitely. I know exactly what you're saying. But anyway, as I was saying, the energy that you come in, I don't believe you plan your traumas because it is, yeah. that Agreed. is very toxic to say that. And that is a form of victim blaming, which a lot of these so-called woo-woo, egotistical jerks, gurus, <laughs> like sure. to do. 
Okay. I, they, I they agree. Got a, they're narcissistic, many of them. Um, but anyway, I do believe, though, because you come in with a specific energy based on the lessons you're going to learn and the karma you want to balance, there's a risk for it. It's yeah. not planned, but there's a risk because it's due to free will, the misuse of free will by others. Okay. Oh, agreed. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, agreed. Agreed. You, you know, I want to, I meant to mention this at the very beginning because I recently, I mean, my background is, is chemistry, biology and chemistry. Mm -hmm. And I know I've had, you know, I'm also very, I love talking about tarot. I love talking about spirituality. Yep. Um, I bring any of this up because I, I published something recently where I said, hey, look, I'm one of those scientists who's willing to believe mm -hmm. that we don't know everything. And, and, you're and not that alone. I, you know what? I'm actually I'm I'm in a big minority, at least in the the scientific mm -hmm. community, because because we want to say, well, humanity, like we know everything, right? We know we know all the nutrients that you're supposed to take at the you know at the at the microgram level, and it's like, no, we don't. <laughs> you know, no. What, what used to be called magic mm -hmm. is what we call science today. We just happen to have done a little bit more, you know, research on it. So. But this was a lead-in to say, like, why is why is tarot why is tarot interesting to you in particular? Yeah. So the thing is with tarot is that it is a tool to help with with reflection, whether it's self-reflection mm. or looking into different scenarios, looking into different paths, and that's what it is. Um, and I do believe that tarot is relevant to li like literally. Everything that you do in your life, everything that you have, right? Everything that you have, even this this mug of water here, you know, Ace of Cups. But yeah, seriously, <laughs> right? Well, yeah, yeah. Are but, you uh, are you sure it's only it's only water in there? It's you only don't have water. Like, you should, no, okay. no, only water. I actually cannot drink because I deal with insomnia and not just <laughs> oh my gosh. things. Yeah. Wait. Oh, that knocks me right out. That's crazy. Oh, that does it? it? Yeah, no, it, yeah. it does the opposite. Well. Or you can say Ace of Pentacles, however you want to, you know, because this is a physical need, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, See, I, w I was looking at the heart on it and going, well, Three of Swords. <laughs> but... <laughs> well, it's not, it's, yeah, but if the, if the heart's intact, you know, it's, it's not, uh, there's no heartbreak the, here, so the the sword the swords are the swords are silent. I don't know. Work well, the with swords, me a little bit on this. The <laughs> swords are all about. See, it's it's associated with the element of air, so it's all about sure. intellect and thoughts and communication. But here's the thing, which I find interesting about the sword suit is that there is still a lot of emotion attached to it, even though sure. The, Air, air element is anything but emotional. That's the cups. <clears throat> Water. <clears throat> but the thing is, you've got, when you're dealing with these heavy swords cards, there's emotion tied into it. Even though it really is. is about yeah. intellect and thinking and communication, there's still emotion. I mean, mm -hmm. the three of swords, you're heartbroken. You're betrayed. So, right. of course, it, well, of course, it's going to be devastating. Yeah. yeah. And those all all have an aspect of emotion to it. I mean, you know, the nine of swords is is oh anxiety pretty, nightmare is mm -hmm. is essentially you know a, yep. a big emotional response. But mm -hmm. it's really difficult, I think, to separate emotion you know, separate the emotion from the thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so we we've all, we've mentioned you said element of air and element of water. So my assumption is that you have some background in Western esotericism. Mm -hmm. Like the Western Absolutely, magical yeah. tradition, okay. Yeah. Well, what is what is that background? Because I, you know, that that's a lot of what I've studied. You know, um, going back to the like the Golden yeah. Dawn traditions, <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it's all tied into astrology as well, Western astrology as well, right? So you've got the sure. four elements. You've got air, which is the swords, right? Um, also the air signs, Gemini, um, mm, Libra, sure. Aquarius. Then you've got. Um, Fire, which is a wands, okay, and that's associated with the signs Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Then you've got water, which is cups, um, and then that's associated with Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. And then finally you've got earth, which is pentacles or coins, depending on the uh, suit that you've got. And that is Taurus, that is Virgo or Capricorn. So there you go. 
So, so remind like I know, but let's let's tell the so the elements: mm -hmm. earth, air, fire, water. What? Uh, yep. And we can start because you know these also correspond to directions of the compass, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Earth is north. You know, air is to the east. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, leave it as an exercise to the reader for the rest of it. Yeah. But they also correspond with seasons, right? Oh, Earth yes. would be considered winter. Winter, yeah. So, 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 so tell me, so tell me, go ahead. You're going to start. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it's, yeah, Earth is definitely winter, and, um, <clears throat> and swords is autumn, and um, cups is summer, and wands is spring. But some of them say that's not always the case. Some of them say that wands is summer and cups is spring. So it, well, there's a I've, lot I've of... Got, uh, uh, the, the tradition that I've followed, Earth was, Earth was winter, air winter. is spring, Wands, uh, wands are summer, and then yeah. uh, cups are, are autumn. Yeah, that's, that's the way that I was taught. Some of so. it's different. Some of it, yeah. Some of it is. Uh, it depends on who you're learning it from. I mean, mm -hmm. it's the same thing sure. with playing. It's the same thing with playing cards. The suits with playing cards, right? Right. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> what I believe is that clubs are wand, or you know, uh, fire. <clears throat> sorry, um, diamonds are er, is earth, like the same as pentacles. And uh, spades is definitely air swords, and um, oh, makes sense. You got hearts, which is cups or water, right? Which would be cups. Yeah, yeah. actually, that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. But uh, when, because uh, I've written up, I I don't really do too much cartomancy. Um, I'd love to get mm -hmm. into it, but there's just so much time in the day. But I do know um, a lot of the meanings of the cards, and you'd be surprised that a lot of the meanings of the playing cards are not identical some of them are but most of them are not identical to uh, the Different. tarot cards oh. in the minor arcana and there's no major arcana in playing cards as well except for that's the right. joker which is the fool right. yeah that's a good point yeah mm -hmm. so we so you know all of the aspects of or all the elements can correspond to you know human aspects of human identity too mm -hmm. yeah. right i mean fire being an aspect of of uh of intuition and and uh and creativity you know, cups we mentioned and and, yeah creativity mm -hmm. yes there you go and, so um, for sure and and yeah cups or water is associated with emotions and and intuition sure. as well and family relationships and all that right and um earth or pentacles is is all everything physical everything sure. physical, right your physical so needs, our body yeah your body and also material money etc and time and time time as well oh, i didn't think about time yeah yeah that's a good good thought yeah yeah and also you've got which one did i miss okay air is all about intellect and every and communication oh, that's right. I guess and travel it can be travel as well um, yeah but yeah, so I yeah time. That's another thing. So this is the thing that I always see when I um, say if I'm doing a tarot reading and say for instance, if somebody gets the six of pentacles, which is give and take, right? It, you know, a lot of a lot of teachers say, well, it's all about donation, giving, but also receiving sure. generosity. Yeah. But it's also time. How much time are you mm. giving? How much time are you getting back? Right? Four of pentacles. Being frugal, or even, dare I say, being cheap. Um, but sometimes <laughs> it's a sign that you've got to conserve your energy and time. Sure, right? sure. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen four of, four of pentacles as, as like a stability. Because, you know, the fours are always yeah, good. Yeah, the four with, is stable. A... But that, that, that particular card is all about being frugal. And sometimes, depending on the spread, it can be downright cheap, which... Being frugal and cheap is not the same thing. <laughs> sure. Well, um, no, no, agreed. No, even agreed. If especially if it's in a reverse position. I do reversals. Not all tarot readers do, but yeah. uh, it can also mean the opposite. You're not. You're not being frugal enough. You're being wasteful. But uh, sure, but, sure. But the thing is, is that four of pentacles means being conserving your time as well, and that okay. can be a message with it. So yeah, that's interesting. I hadn't considered time. Mm -hmm. as as a material resource but it is, you know yeah. it makes perfect sense yeah mm -hmm. so so my interest my interest in divination i would say in in general cuz the you know you and i have already talked about this but you know the word divination the the intent Divine. meaning yeah right mm -hmm. the ability to you know you hear the hear the voices of the gods yeah. and in some of that you know we think of as like well that's just you know it's just fortune telling right no. but 
of the part of the reason why you and I have bonded at all, and I and I like to think we bonded. Hopefully, you're not sitting there going, oh, "Of course, what? yeah, no. we've known each other for a while now." So, thank you. <laughs> so, Anytime I throw something like that out in a show where I go, you know, we've been friends for a while. Wait a minute, are we are friends. Are we friends? And the person goes, uh, yeah. I go, damn it, I'm going to have to edit that out. <laughs> anyway, moving on. My, my interest in divination has always been from developing identity. Or, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I, in my opinion, we don't develop identity so much as discover it. You know, you have to, you have, to have, the ex have some sort of experience to be able to, to evaluate it and go, I like that or I didn't like that. Like, we don't come into this, this life going, you know what, I really like kale salads, right? You have to eat a kale salad. Where the hell did that come from? I don't know. You have to eat a kale salad and go, yeah, I like that or I didn't. You know, you have to have an experience prior to, 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 to uh, evaluating it. So um, anyway, I think divination is important because the, it forces you to experience a bunch of, it forces you to experience things from different directions. You know, mm -hmm. you look at the meaning of a card in the position of a layout and like that means something. You have to get your story to fit into that card. That you got to use your intuition position. and your psychic yes. ability. Yeah, yeah. But, but more than yes, I agree. And then at the same time, like there, I wish I could come up with a good example. There have been times when I know that I've that I've done a reading for somebody, and this happened in graduate school mm -hmm. a lot of times. But I did a reading for somebody and said, "Well, this card means this," and the person goes. That makes no sense. And I said, I don't know. That's the card. That's the position. You know, think mm -hmm. about it. And the person goes, no, no, makes no sense. And then you look at them and you go, no, something's clicking for them, right? Like you can see that, right? The yeah. person goes, oh, no, that's not true. And you go, oh, gosh, I, I hit a nerve, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, there, there were times I'd wait and the person would go, all right, it's my grandfather who's doing this and that and the other. And you go, okay, you know, you didn't want to think about it. You didn't want to see this. Mm -hmm. You know, that's important to, to, consider, to consider our lives, not just identity, just to consider, you know, the direction of our lives. So, like, I think that's the, the beauty of divination is to be able to see, see your life, your existence from so many different angles, yeah. at least 78 yeah. different angles, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I, did, I believe so. Um, I believe so, yeah. That's actually a good point. And I also want to add that I believe that, I do think that there is a mix of fate and free will. I do think that sure. some, some things may be set in stone, some things, but most things are not. And the things that are set in stone can always be molded into... You know, I don't believe timelines are set in stone. I don't believe right. that. But some events, I think, are. If if this is something that you absolutely plan to do, it, there are some things. I'm not going to say anything tragic. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's just misuse of free will, and that can take you totally off your course. Oh, and, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do think that I'm talking about like the people who you're meant to meet. Um, things like that, those who you're meant to be connected to. And, you yeah. know, um, the thing is, is that whenever, say, a medium has said that you choose your parents, you choose your children, etc., um, they're like, why would I have chosen to be abused, right? Well, the, here's yeah. the thing. You didn't choose to be abused. You it may have chosen your parents, but they're, they misused their free will on you. Sure. And that's, unfortunately, Agreed. you got caught in the crossfire. Mm -hmm. And this happens a lot. So I think, uh, I think a very strongly worded letter needs to be written both to Annie Lennox and Dave Stewart of Eurythmics for, mm. for, uh, that was a crap joke, wasn't it? Do you remember sweet dreams are made of this? I do. You know, I remember that. All right. All right. Some of them want to be abused. No, absolutely. How not. about if I, I'm going to, yeah, let's move Maybe I should cut that part there. But, so I think what's now, I brought up, you know, the, the person going, no, 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 it's not true. I think that introspection is difficult. You, you brought up introspection very early on. Yeah. That you, that you have to be able to look at yourself 
in order to do something. I mean, there's kind of a management, you know, maxim. You you can't manage what you don't measure. Mm -hmm. And I think divination is sort of like that with, uh, yeah. you know, with your life. E even if you can't affect the fate patterns, you can affect with your free will, you know, what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis, even longer term, really. But, uh, mm -hmm. um, so I, w I ended up being a really long-winded way of getting into one question, which is just, like, how have you used, how have you personally used divination, you know, to, in your own personal development and, and life development? So, yeah, so what I do is I, I try to, I use it to gain different perspectives on the situation that I might be in. Also, I, also, I use it for making decisions as far as should I go to, to use path A or path B. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's where free will comes in too, because if you do a reading, you want to look past, present, future on one particular path, you don't like what the outcome's going to look like, well, then maybe I shouldn't go that way. I should maybe right. do something else, and then just see if there's a more favorable outcome, then stick with that, right? Yeah. So, so for what it's worth... Mm -hmm. Like this, there's there's an element of the mundanity, the element of the mundane in this that you go, well, I'm I'm just looking at pathways, yeah, because because there's kind of a, I mean, you and I talked about this last time we talked about, you know, you go to Hollywood, you you see like you always see the the mediums in Hollywood or the mm. you know. Yeah, like a gy there's always some gypsy or somebody with like one eye, you know, swollen shut or something. Mm -hmm. um, very different. I mean, yeah. like this, that's been, that is always, you know, they turn up the death card and, you know, you hit oh, the audience should gasp or something, oh, right? Oh, please. Oh, please. <laughs> yeah. That means they, they need to learn a little more about tarot because death rarely means literal death, okay? It only does right. when, when you're doing a reading on somebody who is terminal and you know they're going to cross over soon and the death card comes up, then that basically means that they are going to transition. Sure. Okay, that's sure. really the only time when death literally means death. Not but any other time. But, um, but, like, imagine, you know, you're watching a movie or something. You're watching, mm -hmm. I don't even care. You're watching some movie, and, like, the gypsy turns over, like, the Six of Swords or something. Uh -huh. People aren't going to gasp. They're going to be like, well, I don't know, what, the, what, is, I, what does it mean? It was, yeah. You know, I don't even know. But, so, you know, because I think of the Six of Swords, sorry, for anybody who doesn't know, I think of the Six of Swords as... Like, like death light like you're gonna have a change yeah, moving on <laughs> yeah. with a heavy heart that's the right. way there you mm -hmm. go so so but it's I mean, a change it's a it's a dramatic change but mm -hmm. uh you know not as dramatic as say death or certainly not the tower but like oh, if the gypsy the turns that over <laughs> yeah nobody gives a shit you showed like you know death yeah, with this because not the, many people know what that means also exactly. six of swords can also mean taking a cruise Sure, travel, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but um, anyway, the Hollywood idea of divination is not remarkably accurate. No, be oh, because no. the value of divination is mm -hmm. not, you know, should you go and attack, you know, because you go and go and attack the enemy at o six hundred, but uh, you know, should you, uh, you know, look, look at greater greater pathways of your life. So, yeah. Um, so what, what, I mean, I've been, I've been saying this a couple of times. What, what, what do you think divination uh, does teach us about ourselves? You know, how, how we, how we relate to the universe. I think it gives you some answers as, I mean, you're never going to know exactly why you're here because I think that's just one of those things you're not going to find out until it's your time. I mean, sure. Just, sure. but you will find out certain aspects of why you're here. I think divination can help you with that. It's like, okay, what lessons am I trying to learn and what is what what did this teach me? So those kinds of things divination can help you with so you can take that knowledge and apply it in other areas, right? But yeah. uh, I do think you're going to keep going through the same crap until you finally get it, which I definitely understand how that is firsthand, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, divination can, just, can teach you a lot about yourself, like spiritually, and just even, it even can... Um, teach you about your own personality and um, I'm not like for instance um, for a while I was studying the Enneagram I'm not as much into it as I as I used to be but that is also another form of it um, 
I don't know if anyone uh, really is into it. Like uh, I used to be, I'm a, I'm a four five eight, <laughs> if that means anything. Yeah. Not at all. No. Okay. Because there were, because it's also there are aspects of like personality. I don't know if Jungian. Uh, any Jungian psychoanalysis goes into the the Enneagram. Sort of, a little you know? bit, a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there there is uh, an aspect of it as well. Um, okay. But yeah, the Enneagram is all about it's it's like a nine pointed model. That's that's like a personality typing thing, right? Okay. It's uh, very similar to Myers Briggs, although oh, I okay. think the Enneagram goes a little more. It's a little more esoteric than My Myers Briggs, right? <clears throat> so. I see. Okay. Yeah, Myers Briggs I, has always. It's it's crazy to me how situational. That yeah. seems because, you know, they go, well, look, for the most part, what do you do? And it's like, but, you know, I have been a very different person at home versus at work. You know, mm. like maybe at home you're, a, you know, you act a certain way. You know, your behavior is very different in different situations. Now, mm -hmm. you know, MBTI has been used all over the place, especially oh, yeah. for, um, you know, to try to get teams to gel better together. Yeah. yeah. Not positive that that always is well done but yeah you know. uh, it's it's something that i know there's programs that use it for linkedin also the enneagram yeah. as well yeah yeah mm -hmm. but, another but what is oh, so, sorry go ahead sorry okay go ahead uh, no i was just going to say another personality typing thing that you can you can do is compare yourself to either the major arcana um yes uh cards as well as the court cards you know Yes, right. Because mm -hmm. um, you know, Carl Jung was very was very big on the the yeah. on the tarot. I mean, he mm -hmm. saw the Trumps as archetypes, you know, or yeah. some of the Trumps as as archetypes of human experience, and yeah. then his court cards uh, or the, his thoughts on the court cards. You know, oh, there were sixteen court cards. There are sixteen Myers Briggs things, which yeah. is based on Jung, you know Jungian uh, yeah, personality right. type yeah, stuff. So that's, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So he mm -hmm. sees. So I've seen you know web pages that say you know like Queen of Swords has always kind of resonated very I knew well she with was me. Going to come up at some point in this because I oh, love. Oh come on, why? I no, I love the Queen of Swords. I do. I absolutely love her. She she says, says it as it is and doesn't care. <laughs> so so that's so it always works. That always works for me. Whenever I read, you know, the, all of the, mm -hmm. you know, the descriptions of the people, I go, oh god, yeah, okay. So I'm the Queen of Swords. Queen of Swords. I, I've seen, I've seen these mixed, you know, Queen of Wands and Queen of Swords for the INTJ. Yeah. And I don't even remember what the hell all those were. That's also called the Architect. Yeah. Uh, Myers Briggs thing. So I think Queen of Swords is much. Oh yeah, to Queen, that, of, but... Queen of Wands is uh, she's just highly creative and independent, right? She yeah, <clears throat> she's not going to uh, ruffle your feathers like the Queen of Swords will. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> that sense of detachment, right? You've got yeah. the you know you've got water of air there saying, "Hey, I'm I I can you know there's there's a rational a explanation to all of this." And... Well, no, Queen of Wands is fire, right? So uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. When you were talking about ruffling feathers, sorry, I was talking oh, about Queen of Swords. Oh no, it's, it's okay. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, no. She she's uh, the Queen of Wands is all about independence, creativity. She's that motivational speaker. Um, sure, sure. Yeah. Like Susan Powder. Yeah. Jimmy, stop the insanity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I have now brought up like, you know, two weird 1980s references that really maybe I shouldn't have. But so I know because you wrote this, maybe have, have you published that article yet about, well, I'm just going to say it anyway, because the idea of using tarot uh, as writing prompts. Oh, I've written several pieces, but yeah, I'm okay. going to, I probably have written, yeah, I have written several pieces. They're out in Medium, but I'm going to add some okay. stuff in Substack. I still got to organize what I'm going to put on my uh, Substack because I'm going to put some premium, sure. more premium content and oh, good. Cool. Um, also a Discord channel where I can arrange a once a month or sorry, once a week thing where people can just, you know, do practice tarot readings together. Oh, I'd yeah. love to do that, but that'll be a premium feature, obviously. Yeah. Um, so I just got so much. I'm doing a separate thing where I'm actually teaching a tarot course for a separate group of people, um, 
which is not going to be part of this, but because uh, it's all this is really going to be for those who already have like knowledge in tarot and do readings sure. and just yeah. Um, if I you know if I do another <clears throat> beginner course like I'm doing now separately, then it'll be totally separate. But anyway, um, yeah. So where were we going? <laughs> I totally um, lost my train. Well, it was it was di divination is writing prompts. But actually, there was there was a, a point you made there that I really really want to follow up on mm -hmm. because I I have heard some people. Usually, it's the people who want you to give them money. They say, "Well, you'll never learn tarot. You'll never learn how to be to to be a good you know to do divination well." Um, you, they say you need to work with a skilled reader. My opinion. Well, no, let me stop. Because let me ask your opinion. Okay. Um, what is it? What do you think is better to to work with a skilled reader or to develop understanding of the technique on your own? Oh no, you got to work with others. You definitely got to work with others because the thing is, um, of course, you can do your own self study, but really, it it doesn't even have to be. I mean, yeah, you do want to work with skilled readers as well, but I think it's really important to practice with others who are also okay. working <clears throat> at making the craft better for themselves. You got to give practice readings. It's important. That's the only way you're sure. going to start to master this. And even though I'm pretty good at what I do, I'm not the biggest tarot master. I mean, I was, you know, last week I was teaching uh, the beginner class and somebody had asked me a question where I had to do a little, a little bit of research. I was like, oh, let me check into that, right? So I'm oh, always learning you, too. What was the question? Can I ask? I can't even remember. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> Sorry. No, but, it's just so much, there's so much information. This is the thing, right? Yeah. There is. Oh, yeah. Western magical tradition encompasses so much. I mean, you know, Jewish Kabbalah. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's another Kabbalah. Well, there's I guess Christian there is. Kabbalah there's like the well. yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, so so then I guess I should say Hermetic Kabbalah yeah. is probably closer to the truth on that. Yeah. But you know, encompasses so much. You know, there's all the all the aspects of the Tree of Life and and mm -hmm. uh, you know everything that humanity has ever known about the numbers three and four, mm. the seasons, the the mm -hmm. the aspects, you know, each of the suits, you know, our earth, the elements. There's so yeah. much that fits into oh, that. Oh, yeah. There's, just, there's no end to know it. it. There's absolutely but, no end to it. Mm -hmm. but, I think, but I think that developing that, like my opinion, because I was going to, you know, mm -hmm. I was, was going to tell you my opinion. My opinion is that, that developing that understanding helps, you know, because I, cause I guess, you know, you can go to a, to a skilled reader, and if that skilled reader, I don't want to say prevents, but... Uh, I understand. Gets into the way. I know. I totally yeah. get it. Yeah. <clears throat> that's, that's my opinion. Now, and what you're saying, I, I hadn't considered that. It's a great point that if you're mm -hmm. with others, because there is so much... You know, see, seeing the same card from different angles is is a great because I brought up six of swords as as just change. You know, an aspect yeah. of moving from one state to another. And you yeah. said, well, that could be like moving from one state in the U.S. to another. And I went, okay, good point. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are so many different ways to look at these. So yeah, you're usually doing point. it with a heavy heart though when it comes to the six of swords because it's it's a, it's a card that's associated with grief, right? It's you're moving forward in a state of grief. Um, that's what I associate with the Six of Swords. Anyway. Sure, sure. You know, I mean, think about the Five of Swords. You're feeling defeated because of all the crap that's happened. And then the Six of Swords, you've got a heavy heart from all of it. And then it's like time sure. to move on, right? So, you know, it's funny that the Sixes, the sixes are... are the, all of my understanding, I don't want to say all of it, but much of my understanding of tarot comes from, you know, using the elements in the tree of life. Mm -hmm. So, because, you know, that was how the, that was the golden dawn way of doing things. If you could understand, you know, the, the Sephiroth on the tree of life, one through ten, and then how they, how the element would apply to that aspect of the, of, of each individual Sephira, yeah. then, you know, you, you, you could, you could come up with a, an understanding. So, the sixth Sephira on the Tree of Life is Tifereth. I've mm -hmm. got an awful lot of sibilance going on here. The sixth Sephira. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I have the foam thing here because I'm spitting on the screen. So, 
yeah, this is always, these are always good podcasts, you know, people are going to be wiping their, wiping their YouTube <laughs> going, oh no, it's not, oh God, it was hers. Um, anyway, the sixth, the Tifereth is the sun center. You know, that's, that mm -hmm. is, that is the, the initial, the initial like coming down of, you know, the, the Godhead into, into vague semblance of manifestation, not quite on earth, mm -hmm. but, uh, anyway, all I was going to try to say here, cause I didn't want to take forever is that you know the the six the six generally you know represents like a huge completion yeah albeit on a, on a lower level and so it's, it's weird balanced. to think it's balanced yeah yeah it's a balance it's certainly a balance between kether and malkuth so the the godhead and the mm -hmm. the manifestation and i don't know but see here's kind of the point now here we are talking through this going god there are so many so oh, many directions is, yeah no no so Esotericism is fun, but that's good because what it means is that you continue to look at yourself and your life and your situation with a lot of different directions. Yeah. You, you used the word reflection earlier, mm -hmm. I, and I, th I thought that you used introspection, but it just jumped into my head. You used the word reflection, and I think we, I think humans have a difficulty being reflective. I think we have a hard time like sitting down and quieting ourselves. Oh, for sure. And going, what the hell's going on with my life? You know? Yeah. Do, do you have other like spiritual practices? I'm going off script entirely, but you know, like, cause quieting yourself, meditation, right? Oh, I mean, yeah, do you sure. have a, well, I mean, I t pull a card every morning. Um, I do like readings on new moons, full moons, change of seasons, mm. Um, yeah. I mean, th things like that. I don't really do anything. I always call upon Archangel Michael before I, you know, go to bed. And let me tell you, ever since I started doing that, it's been extremely rare for me to have a sleep paralysis episode. Oh, my gosh. I yeah. didn't know you t you had those. Eek. Very well. I used to have them a lot until I realized, OK, you know what? Let's ask for protection. The, the times that I yeah. the odd times that I did, I don't think I was overly focused. Right. And I mean, I understand sleep paralysis, and we're totally good going on to a different uh... way off piste. But who I cares? Know. Let's do it. Let's do it. So I mean, the same thing with sleep paralysis. Yes, there's a scientific um, there's a scientific aspect to it because when you are in REM sleep, you you release a hormone that temporarily paralyzes you. But oh. the th yeah, the thing is though. When you have sleep paralysis, you're waking up before your outer REM, and that means sure. that the hormone hasn't worn off the way it naturally does when you're properly okay. waking up, right? Sure. But on the spiritual aspect of sleep paralysis, now the thing is, I you probably are aware that when we do sleep, we actually go to the other side, but we are... Oh, sure. But a silver cord is what keeps us, um, you know bound to our bodies mm -hmm. right yeah so you can say it's a quote-unquote light death a light death because you're not really you're 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 very much alive you're just uh preserve you're preserving whereas you are dead you decompose instead right <laughs> sure <laughs> um but no while you're sleeping you are preserving you're healing whatever um but here's the thing when you're waking up your soul goes back into your body but the thing is, is that when you have sleep paralysis, you're in limbo because you're not sure. really supposed to be waking up, but you're in limbo. So when you're in limbo, you're going to see some really awful entities. And right. if you're vulnerable, they're going to attack you. So that shadow person is seeing that you're vulnerable and they're attacking you. Sure. So, but if you Absolutely. are protected by Archangel Michael and your guides, etc., then you're going to be fine most of the time. If, if you're mm -hmm. not focused while you say it, you then they're not going to take it seriously. So, you know, and that thing is your angels and guides are not going to do anything unless you ask them to. Right. So and you've got to be point. pure with your intention with it, too. Good point. Mm -hmm. you, you know, that that brings up, a, I think, an interesting question, because I can certainly see some people listening to this episode and saying, you know, the, what's the, there's like the scientists talking about this, that like there's a, there's a, I guess a healthy balance is the word, the, the phrase mm -hmm. I want to use, you know, cause you get some people, shoot, who was it? Was it like Nancy Reagan had a, an astrologer, I think. 
Um, oh yeah, something. Yeah, I think so. I can't remember. Um, like, but. And Winston Churchill, I want to say, yes, you know, he consulted. Did, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. So, of course, Winston Churchill was also a um, a member. And now I don't remember what Druid order, but he was a member of a few esoteric mm -hmm. societies. Might have been a Freemason, even. Yeah. But mm -hmm. in any event, my, my point was going to be, like, I'm sure there are people who would listen to this and go, these are a couple of lunatics. Why are they talking... <laughs> Like, what the hell? I mean, let what, them, what I would don't you care. Let them call me a lunatic. I really couldn't care less what people say. I, because, yeah. You know. mm -hmm. I mean, I'm okay with... People have already said that they've labeled me, you know, something wrong with me for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And now for many other reasons. But uh, I guess my point is, you know, like, is there... Does it make a difference? Do you need, like, a healthy balance of of divination and, and you know, observing your, your the life around you? Yeah, Do you 100%. Need one hundred, one hundred percent. You need to be, you need to be grounded in reality. One hundred percent. You got to see what's what's really going on around you. You you got to definitely do that. You definitely have to do that. Okay. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to function in life. You know. Sure. You, yeah. And the, the thing is to. This even goes on the same level as wishful thinking and. Uh, that's why I absolutely hate the secret. I mean, I understand the <laughs> sentiment behind it was probably, but you know, I have mixed uh, thoughts about the law of attraction because I do believe that it's not such a scientific thing when you look at it from a realist. And I, I mm -hmm. am a realist. Okay. Sure, Some people think sure. I'm a pessimist, which I can be at times, <laughs> but uh, if I'm optimistic, I'm extremely cautious, cautiously optimistic. Sure. Right? Sure. Okay. But the thing is, I'm sorry, you're not going to manifest something if you wish for it hard enough. You have to take action and you also have to realize that you may not end up getting what you want. You may get something else that's good, but it may not be that, right? It was, was not what you not what you wanted, but what you mm -hmm. needed. Yeah, more like what you needed. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's really what it is. There's no science there. It is cause and effect. Well, you want something sure envisioning and having vision boards can help motivate you but there's nothing magical about it otherwise right but uh you know you have you i think vision boards can work for some people for others no but if you feel that um having a vision board around you with the things you want to manifest helps you go after it more then by all means right. do it um right. but it's not nothing magical about it you got to take action, and if it's meant to happen, it will. Sometimes it's not. I mean, that's just the way it is. Do you... I'm going to sound like a Sean Cassidy song. I mean, do you, do you believe? Do you believe in magic? Not like in the middle of a young girl's heart. Oh. God, I can't think of how the rather, the rest of those lyrics go. But I don't think. Not really. I I don't. I don't think so. I I don't. I believe in synchronicities. Um, sure. Yeah. I think but, that's a. A, I don't believe a, in miracles. I don't. I okay. think I think if you really go after something hard enough and your intentions are strong, then you're going to get it. Um, I mean, there are things that I've done, but, and but I'm that, not going to get into nothing, how... nothing bad, but just some things. <laughs> I've talked about it in other, but I'm just not going to talk about it now. Um, I've done some, I've gone after things that were attainable, sure. unattainable to a lot of people, but I got it because... My will was so strong, I, you know. But but that's what that's what I call magic. That's what Western you, you know magical traditions about. Yeah, it's it's well, about uh, you know it's I it's about. Uh, I've got some mixed opinions about that, but I guess this boils down to yeah. the topic of semantics, I, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, right. I'm I'm simplifying that dramatically, but mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Al Alistair Crowley's you know big point was you know. Love is the law, love under will, you know, yeah. that's, I mean, aside from, you know, do as thou wilt will be the extent of the law, but, which by the way, just to, to throw the, you know, everybody goes, oh, well, Alistair, Alistair Crowley, what a screwed up guy. He said, just do what thou wilt. And the, the word, the phrase before that is, and thou harm none, mm. do what thou wilt will be, you know, will be the extent mm -hmm. of the law. Not that I'm a huge Crowley fan. I'm not at all any, you know, Thalema people out there, you know, sorry. But all I was going to say was that, you know, the the idea of magic was the ability to use your will mm -hmm. to direct your will yeah. towards something. 
Well, I mean, that makes sense. That makes sense. And uh, that's really what spell work is, too. It's really another way of yes, of, yes. of using a prayer. It's another, It's nothing magical yes. about it. So I don't know. I guess but I'm that, too... that is magic. I don't care. Tell you the way you see it. I don't know. I, Sem- I'm... Semantics, yeah. Semantics, yeah. <laughs> semantics. So, yeah. So, um, I'm curious too, like how do, I mean, we, you and I have been talking about a lot of crazy things and hopefully, you know, at least half of it people have picked up. Mm -hmm. Um, like how do you get started doing this? Like how do you get, I mean, it's not as easy as just looking at the little white book. No. In a, in a in a tarot in a bo- in the box of of, of you if know. If this makes our, sense, you just literally fall into it. He's like, oh, this mm. is what I'm drawn to, and this you just do it. That's really how it is. That's how it is. And the thing is, if you're not ready to do these things, you're not going to do it. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. You 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 can start all you want, but you're not going to. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, like I was interested in tarot. I mean, a long time ago. I won't name the number of years, but. And as a graduate student, so long as I got good and drunk, I did have to be <laughs> drunk in order for this to work. Right. I found that interesting because, like, if I just if I was sober and I like laid out cards, I'm like, I don't know. And mm-hmm. at the time, I was using the Celtic cross layout, which is already a complicated one, right? It is was, a complicated is ten, one, and I don't ten think ten cards, eleven. It is ten cards. I don't use it because yeah. I don't think it's necessary. There's other ways you can get answers with more simplistic. Uh, oh my God! Yeah such a huge layout but yeah anyway my, my point was it didn't work when i was sober but then when i was drunk you know everything would flow and i had that's friends who were like you're you're creepy i don't want you to talk to me again but that's not unheard um, of <laughs> really okay all right yeah so but yeah you i think you need to be ready it, it took you have to be ready you know another mm-hmm. 20 years before ooh, more yeah well yeah about another 20 years before i went hey i could probably learn this again or start doing this again. And then, you know, it really clicked with me. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, you got to be definitely ready. But the Celtic cross, I, I don't, I mean, listen, it depends on the reader. Some readers feel it's 100% necessary. And some readers don't believe in reversals. And that's totally cool because everyone's got to sure. work. They got to do what works for them, right? I just personally don't think the Celtic cross is necessary because there's other ways you can get just as many profound answers. You know, you can even get a lot from a three card spread. Six like, series. There's oh, so absolutely. many three card spreads. There's a lot of them. There's not just mm-hmm. past, present, future. There's bo- bo- mind, body, spirit. Uh, like there's so sure. many. You know, there's so many three card spreads, and uh, you can get so many answers. Do different variations of it. You can do yep. like a nine card past, present, future. You know, three cards for the past, oh, three yeah, cards yeah. for the present, three cards for the future. Right. Yeah. Good thinking. Yeah. And when I mean the future, it has to do with a certain path that you're taking. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So. Yeah. Right, because it's because it's not fortune telling. No. It, it's figuring out the patterns that that are happening. That's right. In your life, so. Yeah. All right, so we have talked about fifty minutes here. Mm-hmm. I, we we covered everything that I was gonna that I was hoping to talk about. Um, do you? Can you just tell us like how do how do people find you? How do they find Miriam? Okay. So you can go on miriamreadstarot.com and contact me through that way. I'm also on miriamreadstarot.substack.com. And um, even though i am got my mixed opinions about Medium right now, I don't think I'm going to be going anywhere with it in the end. So I'm Miss sure. Mir, M-S-M-I-R, dot medium, dot com. So, um... I mean, I don't really, I don't really use Instagram or TikTok that much, but uh, I, I might get back into it. I don't know, but I'm Miriam Reads Tarot on Instagram and Miriam Rachel Tarot on TikTok. But I, like I said, I don't know if I'm really going to get back into it or not. You yeah, know? Yeah. Well, you had said that you started doing a video series where you did like one card. Like talked about the aspects of one card a day was or, yeah you know, in, in I, each video? I did but you know what I just I got tired because it was on TikTok you mean well the thing is with TikTok oh that I can go down another rabbit hole with that <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah so uh, 
I don't know. I don't think I'm going to, if I'm going to go back on there, there's going to be something totally different that I'm going to do instead. So I don't know. But right now, sure. social media is not really the the thing. For, I'm just not really into it anymore. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's good at, see, the. I mean, I, I wanted to have this particular conversation because what I think social media is good at doing Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. I was going to shut down the, the conversation, and now you drew me back into. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but so I think social media is good for pulling us out of observing what's going on around us. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's great for distracting us and yes. and making sure we don't see what's happening. But you know, I'm trying to remember. Somebody had a big a big. Uh, like a big article, I don't know, time article, I can't remember, but, you know, there was an article about how, like, all of our Facebook, all of our Instagram, all of everything, Twitter, whatever, it's never, like, the bad aspects of life, mm. right? You look at Facebook, and it's, you you know, you're taking a selfie, taking oh, a selfie yeah. with oh, your buddy, sure. and, yeah, yeah it's all, all the good stuff, and people, yeah. so people have the tendency to look at that and go, God, it looks like Miriam's got a great life, you know. Oh my then, God, yeah. <laughs> but see, then yeah. so then you so then somebody you know somebody will make that assumption. Well, it looks like you have a great life. You're always getting selfies, you know, at the Grammys or something. And you're like, <laughs> no, I'm totally depressed, and it, my life is it sucks, you know. So <laughs> yeah, it, it takes us out of it. Is the yeah. point? Yeah, the highlight reels. You're going to show your highlight reels yes. on social media. So I think that's something. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, oh yeah, this is going to be, that would be a totally different conversation. Where, it, it, right. Yeah. But, uh, but I, you know, I think that's one of those, those grounding, that's why I think divination is great for like a grounding. Yeah. Because, oh, you yeah. know, you look at your sure. Facebook feed, God, I'm great. I'm so great. And then you do a tarot reading and you go, oh shit, I forgot yeah. about all those things that are not great. You right. Know? So. Right. I think there's value to that. So. Yeah. Didn't think of it that way, but you're right. <laughs> Just a thought. So, yeah. All right. Well, Miriam, thank you so much for talking to me. Thanks for having me. Of course. No, I mean, you know how much, I mean, you, you and I have spent a lot of time talking. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Always, always enjoy talking to somebody who has any kind of background in Western esotericism. Yeah. So, thank you again. Thank you as well.